Okay, here we go. Now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another special episode. Um, I actually know we're coming in strong. Uh, we have Kelly Fitz in the building. What's up, Kels? Hey, hey, hey. I'm so glad to be here. I'm really excited to talk to you, and I'm really <laughs> happy that you're having me. I want to thank you so much. So let, let's get right into it. Um, Kelly, have you ever, well, not have you ever, um, have you always lived in New Jersey? That's, I think that's my first question. So I grew up in New Jersey and then I went uh, to Fordham University in the Bronx and mm-hmm. I stayed. Uh, after graduating, I was home for like three months bartending at a place uh, right near Rutgers. And then I knew I was mm-hmm. going right back into the city. It was just kind of like a little transitional period. But then I was in New York City until August of last year. And we all know what happened last wow. year and why I'm probably back in Jersey right now. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, I don't know if you know anything about NY specifically for food uh, and uh, like how they're go about it. So Sean lives in Brooklyn. He's my mm-hmm. sous chef or was rather we, we don't work together anymore. But he I, I keep tabs on him and what happens in yeah. the city per se. But right now it's mandated for the vaccine. Mm-hmm. I think in like the next couple of weeks, like everybody needs to have it. Yeah, uh, period. So I, how do you feel about that, though? Um, I think it's kind of. It's it's a tough ask. Uh, I think it obviously is a super important thing to address right now. But I think because it kind of went from like, hey, this is something you should probably have to like, no, you can't live unless you have it. Yeah. Kind of a tough transition for people. Um, And I know there are so many people out there that, you know, aren't able to be vaccinated because of medical issues and whatever and then they have to Mm -hmm. go about the whole you know getting the exemption card and even then even if you are vaccinated that doesn't necessarily mean that you aren't carrying it and you aren't possibly you know passing it off to someone else or you can't get it so i think it's 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 something that i think if nothing else it's important that a look at the general public's health specifically Mm -hmm. in enclosed spaces and in places where so uh, I'm one of those people I was working as a bartender in New York City yeah I knew I was gonna get it at some point which I did (laughs) I did have it like it's it was one of those things I was like all right well I better brace myself and I had it back March of 2020 like back oh wow like literally first before the first boom yeah yeah basically so I had it when like I started feeling not great and I had called out to work. I was like, I don't think I can come in today. And they were like, don't even worry about it. We can't open. And I was like, oh, oh, shit. Okay. And um, then it was like, unless you have a 104 degree fever, you're not even allowed to come get tested. We can't do anything for you. So I and my I had a roommate who was originally from Tennessee she went home to Tennessee right before everything shut down because she was also working as a bartender and she was Smart. like, I'm getting out of Dodge. So I was quarantined by myself for two months, but it was, it, <laughs> wow. it was rough. It was, it was a lot, yeah. but like, I think right now, I think people are going to have to kind of, it's going to be a hard transition for people. Just, just understanding mm-hmm. like why this is happening how this happened. I think that's what uh, um, the majority of people I know I'm speaking for myself. I sit back and I go, how did this happen? How did it, Mm. how did this, how? Um, But I mean, is it bad? No, I don't think it's bad, but at the same time, it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's aggressive. There's no doubt. (laughs) So I got COVID January this year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I worked all through, I was off for like a couple months and then I worked. Right. So my my current, my former restaurant closed only because it was closing to begin with. Mm-hmm. So that closed in December. And in January uh, last year, we started to hear about this pandemic. They're like, oh man, I don't know. I don't right. think it's going to come here in America. Literally a couple months later, boom, we were all out. And I was already in my second restaurant uh, for like maybe a couple weeks, not even. Um, and then they shut down. I'm like, well, 
That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> and then now like, unemployment. Did you? I I don't know because again I was in uh this like New York up until August, uh-huh. so I know a big thing was kind of like okay, you're allowed to open for takeout. Did did yeah. you ever work for anyone like that or? I don't. I, um, I still don't fully know say, how New Jersey really handled everything in the thick of it. But got it. So I believe we were. Cl- most of the stores were closed. When I say most of the stores, the um, um, the corporate ones. Most of the, the corporate stores are closed. The mom and pop shops are were still open, mm-hmm. and we're doing to go. Um, a little background on me: I've always been a corporate chef for like fifteen years now, okay. so I know how that that business kind of entails. So, from what I heard on my last company, uh, they. Only the managers worked mm-hmm. and they were only doing maybe like lunch to go right. for like four days out of the seven or yeah. something like that. So that's how mostly everyone handled it. But I, I can tell you right now, it was it was um, it was a hard transition. However, the company I did end up working for Country Club, bro, I'm telling you, it was sketch because every it was like it was like normal. Nobody wore masks. I mean, I wore a mask like um, every like it, it was just like almost if everything was like not affected inside the country club. Like literally, everyone just kind of. And I'm like, we we all realize this is like a global thing. Like, why are we? Yeah, it was so uncomfortable, but I I needed the money. I needed to work. Of course, um, and that I think is the like position most that do. so many people were put in, where it was kind of like, well, do do I feed my family or do I? Yeah. It, 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 that that was the hardest part because I think so many people didn't take this seriously until it was too late, and I I think that is something that a lot of people are grappling with now, and mm-hmm. it's wild. And it just being someone that was in, you know, the service industry and the restaurant industry, watching these institutions that I've mm-hmm. worked for, I worked for very very big. New York City institutions that now Mm -hmm. don't exist anymore because they took they took everything seriously and it was it's wild to see it's 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 horrible that like you know not to start this off on a bum note but at the same time it's like that's the reality we're living in and it's it's unbearable so I I moved back home and I was kind of like all right I got to figure out what I'm gonna do now like I went to Fordham I have this degree I'm not using. You know, I tried to like do the making it thing for a while. And then basically the world mm. was like, oh, we're going to take a break on that now. And I'm like, <laughs> OK, let's figure out a plan B. So now I do research and development for a snack food company, which is oh, super awesome. Cool. Yeah. So it's, it's very super, awesome. Super cool. Yeah. I, like I'm on the back end of things where like, you know, like, you know, Trader Joe's or Rite Aid or CVS or something. They'll come and be like, hey, we hear that spicy food is going to be a trend we want spicy snacks and then it's my job to source the different snacks source the different spices all the different things i do all the research and development the testing and then i calculate all like Mm -hmm. nutritional panels and and everything if it's on the shelf i probably know what's in it and i use like kind of like a background for that um but because i work for a company that makes preservable food that can last on shelves essential so i got the job immediately was in the office so they never shut down so it was very interesting to go to work for Mm -hmm. someone that i don't want to say wasn't affected by the pandemic because ingredient sourcing things coming from overseas like everything it was absolutely Mm -hmm. affected but the immediate business i worked through it was you know business as usual it was wild yeah now we're when you say um, in the building, were you guys like separated in cub- cubicles? Like I'm trying to picture what you actually do in R and D because I had a um, one of my other sous chefs. Her dad does the the R and D oh, stuff, yeah. but he's like the chef in there. But like, how does that translate? What do you actually physically? Well, you, you know, you say you do the labels and stuff. Like, how fun is that job, and what exactly do you do? So it's a super cool job. So we are a snack food manufacturer so we do private label stuff so our own in-house brands that are out on the shelves but then we also manufacture and produce 
uh, snacks that you might see on the shelves right now from conception through production. We package, we send out wow. and distribute. Um, but so for me, a typical day in the office, I go in, I see what's on my docket. It's like, okay, we have a meeting with say Kroger or, or Aldi or Lidl or something like that. Mm. Today, we sent them out samples last week that we produced in-house of say a bunch of different flavors of popcorn. We're going to sit down. We're going to have a zoom Mm. meeting with them. We're going to discuss what they like and see how we can possibly move forward. Did they like this? Did they want to change something? Is it okay? So say you want a popcorn, is it air popped? Is it kettle popped? And so we need to, and then we adjust the sodium levels and I'm the one that goes to all the different ingredient sources, the different seasoning suppliers. And I'm like, Hey, say they want pizza. I need you to make me a Mm. pizza seasoning. It needs to be kosher. It needs to be non-GMO. It needs to be gluten-free. What can you send me? And then I go through, I do the testing process with my R&D chefs. And it's really interesting. But like, I'm definitely like an office person, but I have my hands in so many different things. I'm out in the factory. I know how all the machines work. I work with the the different like lab techs. I do the different titrators. I figure out the sodium levels and it's, there's a lot of different things going on. And then it comes back to me to do the ingredient statement and calculate all the calories and all that. It's, Mm -hmm. it's the side of things you don't necessarily think of, but yeah, so many people depend on and it's been very interesting getting to kind of be immersed in that that is a that is such a cool profession (laughs) like i I have so many questions but like i don't want to i don't want to bombard you right away with like all the other things because yeah i just feel like there's so many whenever so i guess the 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 follow-up question would be like when you do go shopping Mm -hmm. as someone that knows the background of it what do you look for? What would you look for in some kind of the items and in, in the produce or um, things like such? So the craziest thing about me kind of falling into this business is that I wasn't a huge snacker to begin with. And okay. the reason that they were so interested in me is because of the fact that I had a bartending background. Ah. So they they knew I had, you know, my my degree. So and I knew a lot about like the marketing and interacting with people, bringing on customers, things like that. But then Mm. they a lot of the questions that came to me were like, well, did you used to do bespoke cocktails? Do you know a lot about flavors? Do you like, you know, like or Uh. are you good at math? Like things like, like there are certain things from that end that if you have the right teacher, you can learn them. Um, but when I go like, so I was never a snacker to begin with, but I, from the time I was relatively young ish, like in high school, I, Mm -hmm. I've always been one of those people that's been very conscious about the food I eat, the things I put in my body, like, because I'm the type of person I could walk by a Burger King and gain five pounds without even looking. (laughs) So (laughs) yeah, yeah, yeah. I, feel I, need, I need to be conscious. So I, you know, I would always look at labels and look at different things. So I kind of came into it already having a good idea of what to look for. But now I think there are a lot of things that because I work for a company who is super health conscious, but also very allergen friendly. Um, mm. So there's a lot of stuff that are in certain labels that I've learned. Well, we might not be able to use them, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're bad. Like I, yeah. the one thing I always think of is like MSG. Mm. MSG is delicious, but I feel it's like it got delicious. it got built up to be this like horrible thing that so many people they have allergies of, and it causes all these problems. Mm. And like one of the things I had to do recently was replicate the flavor of nacho cheese Doritos. Yeah, you know what a big part of that is MSG. MSG. Can't have yeah. that <laughs> in in My- the place that I work. So it's, it's learning a lot of different substitutes and learning, um, Mm. if I see, you know, something in one label, I'll be like, oh, that's probably because they were probably trying to replicate this in something else. So it's been very, very interesting, Mm -hmm. even for my own, uh, home cook, like cooking, like, no, it's, um, it's very intriguing because, uh, well, let's get into a little bit of MSG. Um, has anyone... Has anyone, or any of your chefs rather in the building mentioned to you where or how they extract the MSG? Is that a process that you know? Maybe someone has told you? It's not, but also I will say we do not work with it. So I am oh, definitely okay. ignorant as far Got as that it. goes. Yeah. 
Okay, so I just know it's I'll give I you a little. Deal with. I can't use. <laughs> so MSG is naturally occurring in corn, mm-hmm. tomato, and Parmesan cheese, pretty much. Okay. Right. So whenever somebody, like uh, I swear to you, it was like last week. Fucking, it was like Friday, and this woman, this woman came in. She was like very allergic to MSG. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, not a big deal. So we're we're doing our thing. We're we're doing a course. All of a sudden. One of the dishes got sent back and she was like, this has MSG in it. I'm like, no, <laughs> absolutely not. We don't, we don't cook with it. Like we don't even touch it. Everything is a, just a fresh product. And then she has such a bad experience. And then she just got up and left, you know, paid for her food, obviously, but just got up and left. And we're all just like, wonder what she actually ate that made her think that it was MSG. So if we kind of dial it back, her first course, the first course was beets. So we honey roast the beets, et cetera, okay. gets braised, all processed, delicious, gets ricotta cheese, you know. The second course is she had the crab cake and we make the crab cake with corn. Okay. I'm like, oh, maybe it's the corn flavor because, you know, we there's several preparations of it. We turn it into a juice, juice, J-U-S, like a, like a sauce. Um, it's in the actual crab cake. It's littered literally with, with corn in it. Maybe, maybe. Just the taste of the the pure corn mimicked the MSG a little too closely. That sounds delicious, she it was, by the way. I'm just no, no, gonna <laughs> jump in there and say that sounds fantastic. <laughs> I was actually trying to get you to come to the restaurant. At least I, I have I, to I, stop by. I definitely it. want to. Yeah, definitely stop by. While the not, I don't say the 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 menu is not changing just yet. So um, I mentioned to you, it's a tasting menu, mm-hmm. tasting restaurant. And we change the menu four to six times a, a year. Okay. So it's quite a lot uh, of just running around and stuff. Mm-hmm. But right now we're gearing towards the fall. Maybe next week or the week after that, we're just gonna switch over to the fall menu. So a lot more, um, a lot more root veggies will be appearing onto the menu. But that crab cake will stay there uh, because um, have to come. Mm-hmm. it's like they're it's like the biggest hit kind of. We can't okay. necessarily just take it off. You know, but that's that's for for anyone that's kind of um, mentioning to you MSG this MSG that. Just say to them, have you ever had tomatoes, corn, or Parmesan cheese? They're like, yeah. Well, I was like, okay, well, that's where yeah, that's where it comes from. So, not a little food fact for you. Um, it's good for to know. a little, t- I, I, it varies. It, it literally is because it gets it gets this little bastard name on it because of uh, a little history that happened. I think it was in the seventies. I forget exactly when. Um, but it was more racially toward something um, back then than the actual product in itself. But, Kels, I do have a, a video for you. I think you're going to be surprised on this one. I think you'll okay. get a little kick. Okay. I'm nervous. <laughs> we'll both be. No, 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 no. Don't be nervous. Um, so, this is the actual video that well, we got to know for each chefs. other. I've been out on dates with more than one chef, and every single one of you has had a tattoo right here of a cooking utensil. I've been out with fork guy, knife guy, and also that two prong (laughs) thing that you twirl pasta around with guy. And like, show me if you got them because they look cool. But like, when you graduate culinary school, do you have to get that? Because you've all- (laughs) Okay, yeah. Yeah. We we all get it. We all get it, Kels. That's uh, that's a thing. I (laughs) stand by that. Although before we even start, I'd like to point out the amount of responses I got to that that were like, no. (laughs) You don't need that to graduate culinary school. I'm like, I, I know I was being facetious. Like, <laughs> did you think I actually thought that was a way you had to pass your finals? <laughs> like, I was it, like, was, oh, it was so good. It was so good. <laughs> good. Yeah. No, because you responded to that. And I was just like, oh, this dude has such cool content. Like, I definitely need to follow him. And uh, just looking at your comments section, though. So just to give you perspective, you, had, you have the ultimate sad poppy just mentioning to you. Uh, I don't know if you know him by any chance. Oh, I know. Love this is. guy. Yeah, <laughs> Littered with tattoos, right? And yeah. then you have the people from Mythical Kitchen coming at you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The, I like the way they responded so though, because like, because Josh, he has a spork, and he's just like, ah, ugh. <laughs> like, can't do right. it. Yeah. Just to let you know, at one point, I did consider getting something here, but I didn't. I did not. That's not. <laughs> that's not what we do. Okay. <laughs> um, the the one thing you will notice though, um, 
I do have a lot of stuff on my arms, like uh, mm-hmm. just like shit from getting burned, getting sliced, getting cut. Is because that it, the, you know, is that like why or were you considering getting tattoos ahead of time and you were just like, oh, now I have a place for it. <laughs> that was part of it. Yeah, because uh, in the business, uh, a lot of things. Well, it's not like you you want to cook with your sleeves either. So our chef coats right. usually will go all the way to here, and you can three quarter it. Mm-hmm. But like if you're busy, it will it will ride up, yeah. and it kind of is annoying. So we we just take it all the way up and fine. But like this stuff on on the on the forearms is like the the oil splattering or like shit from the the mm-hmm. ovens. Like you're sticking in the oven, right? You hit. You hit like the 500 degree oven. There you go. You have instant tattoos yeah. all over you. So that's kind of a thing. But uh, the reason I got that tattoo is because of my boss. Uh, it was more of a passing gift when okay. he when he passed away. But that's it. Nothing else. Uh, there's no produce or anything. It's just a dragon that wraps <laughs> into my chest. <laughs> you know what? It's so funny. I like. I didn't expect that to take off kind of in the way that it did. Uh-huh. But I just thought it was so funny, the amount of responses I got to it, of how yeah. many chefs were just like, oh, I have one. But it's 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 funny because like, that it's a fully true story. I have gone out on dates yeah. and I have dated more than one chef. Every single one of them has had the forearm tattoo. tattoo of something or at least somewhere else on their body that like. Uh-huh. Yeah. Cause it, it- it immortalizes what you do, kind of. I think yeah. that's the thing for it. But also, we have nothing else to spend shit on, so we, we get that. <laughs> I'm sure. I know so many people in the comments were, like, trying to guess who it was, too. And I'm like, can we all uh, just relax on this? Just- <laughs> like, we don't need to go there. Did you, did you ever see the, the West guy? Did you say whisk guy? I, I couldn't remember what you said. It was for guy. It was, it was, it was the two prong fork that you twirl pasta around with guy, which I've since learned is a carving fork. It's a carving fork. Yes. yes I but I. But we twirl I, pastas with it. Yes. But he had the tattoo <laughs> where there was like pasta twirled around on it. And I was like, all right. Yeah, I guess that's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was just so fun. And then I, I realized you're also a Jersey native. I was like, oh my God, she's from Jersey. Yeah. And I, I collect. I clicked your stuff and then um, instant instant gratification all over because you're um, really charming, actually. On your Aww. content, it's like you want to make sure people engage with you. I get it. I wish I'm like that, but I'm not. I'm cynical and I'm very petty. So any of my cooking stuff, I'm just like, here you go. But like, I feel if I just open my mouth a little too much, I, I will offend people. So I don't really... <laughs> You know what? I think I really talk someone. there is a lot to be admired, though, in that where you're just kind of like, no, see here, I'm using this as a platform to not only mm. show what it is that I do, because you like the reason I followed you is because like there's a running joke in my household that I love wedding shows and I love cooking shows and I'm single <laughs> and I don't cook. And that's because nice. I like to watch people that are doing the things that I can't do. Now, I, I'm not a bad mm. cook. If I ever try, it usually goes well. Like, I think I innately mm. have a good idea of what I'm doing in the kitchen, but I'm one of those people yeah. I eat to live. And, like, ah. I wish I had that kind of... Like, I know people that love to cook and love to bake and mm. love to... And I'm just kind of like, no, I'm just going to fry up a couple eggs so I can get some protein and go about my day. I wish I yeah. had that desire. So when I watch people that care so deeply about this mm. amazing art form that I have nothing to do with, I, it's just really, really mm. cool to me. And I love the fact that you use your TikTok and your YouTube and, and the different platforms you have to just show people like, mm. look at the. I watched a video of yours the other day where someone was like, ew, raw eggs. And you're like, (laughs) shut up, look at this. And you just like made like a bowl of rice with all this cool shit on and then raw egg yolks. And it looked like the most delicious thing you could ever put in your mouth. And I'm like, no. You should try it. That's exactly why this platform exists. Mm. Yeah. I I, I really love the platform because it's highly engageable. It's so, so highly engageable, even more so than Instagram. So I, I started the YouTube thing I want to say like four years ago now, maybe mm-hmm. five years ago. Um, also in Instagram, in the in the mindset of I'm just gonna produce chef content. I'm just right. gonna produce cooking stuff, nothing else. Um, but I, you know, obviously there's other things that I do. But I'm like most people, you know, several other things. But 
when TikTok came around, I was like, oh my God, people actually will stop and comment to you. Mm -hmm. And it's such an easy thing because it's on your phone. Well, I mean, you can get it, you know, YouTube on your phone too, but it's just like right there, 30 seconds at a time, you know, you're so, you swiping right. up if you like they cool. Um, it just felt so good. I'm like, this is, this is my jam. This is my, this is my new thing. So, right. So were you so active on then, Vine at all? I did Vine for the, the last two seconds of it before ah, okay. it sold. Yeah. I yeah. think I would have, I think I would have made a killing because the petty snarky things were so good in Vine. Uh, back in the heyday. Right. And um, did That's, you do Vine? I did. So I was on Vine. Um, I did all right. I think I had like a few thousand followers on there. I didn't do mm. like great, like especially in comparison to the people that came out of Vine. Mm -hmm. That unfortunately Millions. came out of Vine. <laughs> Yeah, a lot Kabillions. of billions. I know. Mm. I know. I mean, like, I'm glad that certain people came out of Vine, like Cody Co. and Noel Miller, like people like that. But like, you know, we get also our Jake Pauls. Yeah. That came out of Vine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I was on Vine. I did all right, not great. But I, what I liked about Vine that I have since learned that TikTok is also doing is the curation aspect of it, which mm -hmm. on Vine, like. I, I never got a Jake Paul video or I never got yeah. like, you know, so it's like the whatever that whole hype house situation that yeah, Vine yeah, yeah, yeah. was like all the creators that live together the same way on TikTok. I think my for you page has been curated where I get like the super dry humor people that are mm -hmm. very I don't want to say similar to my content, but like things that yeah. I'm interested. I don't get yeah. like. God bless her for using the platform. I have never once seen a Charlie D'Amelio video on TikTok. Oh, I blocked. I blocked her right off. Like I, I, I think the I, I remember the first. I'm like, ah, that's not for me. Literally, not blocked, but like hide videos from his user or not something. Not interested. No, and I've never <laughs> not, even done that. Really. It. I think it's just the way you engage with the other videos. The algorithm uh, gets to know you and gets to mm. know the stuff you're interested in. And like I gotta say, my for you page. Nine and a half times out of 10 nails it. Um, yeah. But there are certain things with TikTok. Like, again, there is clearly an algorithm. Yeah, definitely is. And you got to kind of have to play through this trend. But hey, it's it's an interesting journey. Um, mm -hmm. Just looking at your page, you several thousands more than what I what I have on my on my page. However, like I said, your content is so it's like it's so cool and, and snarky. I, I love it. I, I really uh, do. Thank you. Um, it reminds me of Liza. Like it literally Liza in your format and what you do. I was just like, yep, feels like Koshi. So it's nice. And she's on a platform too, but she like dances yeah. more now than anything, which yeah, is you fine. Know what? I think if like I have gotten compared to Liza before, I think Liza leaned a lot more into like a character aspect of it. And I'm just yeah, kind yeah. of like, this is what I'm thinking about. And I think feel like people can talk about it like and yeah, i don't know if it's definitely. like leaning into the relatable thing but i also feel like i can straddle a fine line between being the chill girl and like just being yeah. th your friend and like i mm. never want to cross the line of being the sounds bad but the pick me i do I do. I understand. You. I feel I understand like I could straddle that line and I'm really trying not to <laughs> <laughs> because I think it, a lot of the time with TikTok and, and Gen Z and stuff like that, everybody is very, very ready to put people in a box. Yeah. Unfortunately. And everyone is ready to, everybody doesn't want to label, but they're so ready to label somebody. Very. Very, so that's so. why I think it's important to try and appeal to people to be sensitive about, you know, different things. Like you said before, I don't want to offend anybody, Yeah. but also, you know, post things that if you were scrolling on the page, what do you want to see? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I usually follow just all cooking content, like literally like the biggest names on the platform. That's pretty much all my for you stuff. See, now I'm going to ask you a question, even though you're the host of the mm. show. Was that to curate your channel or was it because you didn't want to promote your music? I didn't know. So mm -hmm. I, at the time, I was just like, I love this guy. Follow it. I love this mm -hmm. guy. Follow it. Love this girl. Follow it. Um, right. But when it began, though, 
um, my the people that I followed were all music people. Okay. Because I, that's that's what I also do for like eleven years now. Uh, yeah. Professional musician. So I was just like, I've oh my god, into some of your lives I've seen. Hmm. I was like, this, this, uh, like, because it sings so well. They can play so great. I wish I could just jam around with them. And uh, I, a part of me still want to do it. But again, right now, COVID is such a bummer. Can't Tough. get any gigs. Um, I don't even want to bring people out. Like, why would I, why would I right. chance you going out to my show, getting, getting COVID or something? I just don't want to chance it. Right. So right now the, the band is in a, in a standstill. So to answer your question, when it began, it was curated more for music, right? But now it's all chef content, but still obviously music, because um, that, that will always be with me um, no matter what. Right. However, though, I know you do music too. Yeah. Um, we we got to know this uh, briefly chatting. How how did that come about? So I've always been from the time I was walking always on stage Mm -hmm. like I went into dance classes and that led me to doing like oh well how else can I be on stage let me try singing lessons and that led me to musical theater Uh and then it just from the time I was little I was always involved and then it was kind of like oh no she can sing she's Mm -hmm. not just taking singing lessons she actually is a good singer and so I got a lot more involved in like the different theater groups and stuff in the area. And uh, so I went to Red Bank Catholic, which is a high school Uh in New Jersey, which is in Red Bank, which is a a little like city that has the Count Basie Theater. Uh, Mm -hmm. A lot of different acts play at. And and it's a a pretty well-respected theater. I did theater there a lot, regional theater, community theater, stuff like that. And I met a lot of people through that. And this one guy that I met, this guy, John, he's one of those people that could pick up an instrument and know how to play it. Just <laughs> abs- it's it, don't you hate them? Mm, They're a, it just, I do. he's he, he's so insanely talented and he had a cover band for a little while. We mm. met doing a show when I was a freshman in high school, but we remained in contact okay. and and then he had a cover band for a while and then he gave me a call my the beginning of my junior year in college. And he's like, Hey, so quick question. (laughs) How well do you think you could sing cover songs? And I'm like, Oh, there you go. I don't mean to like toot my own horn, but like toot, you know? And he's just like, great. We're booked for this big ass venue in New York. And my singer is currently sick as shit. Do you think you might be able to fill in? And I was like, Mm -hmm. yeah, send me over the set list. Let me know. And so I got the set list. I'm like, yeah, this is it. It was like everything from uh, like the Spice Girls, the Doobie Brothers. Like if you're drunk in a bar nice. at 2 a.m., you're going to yep. want to hear it. And I know. So, it. <laughs> yeah. And so I like I was like, all right, sick. When can we rehearse? And he's just like immediately. So he's uh-huh. uh, in North Jersey as well. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I took the train in, we had a rehearsal and the band clicked immediately. Nice. And we were kind of like, oh, this is amazing. And so we started playing out and then the singer kind of, the singer that was sick kind of like tapered off anyway. So he's just like, hey, oh. you're the singer now. And I was like, cool, I'm in college. <laughs> Hmm. So, but then we <laughs> started playing all over New York and different venues in Jersey. And it's one of those mm. things where he has a lot of different connections and he, he's just one of those guys that people want to work with. So uh, he's just kind of like, Hey, so-and-so wants us to do a three hour slot at this bar during happy hour. You want to do it? And I'm like, yeah, mm. all right. Like, so, but we've currently been talking about the idea of doing things more seriously now that things are opening up yeah. more and, mm. So many more bars are looking for, you know, talent. A lot and more. A lot of like cruise ships, stuff like that. We're kind of like, do you want to just give up your life and go be the cover band on a cruise ship? It's like, yes, I do. I would like to do they that. They pay well. Yeah. Just to let you know, they pay really well. Yeah. Like astoundingly well. I know a couple of people that do it seasonally mm-hmm. and it's like the best thing they ever done. However, it's the seasickness that kind of will... um I will say we'll be like the do not get it. So I'm I'm down to clown. I'm ready. <laughs> Let's go. I'm down to clown. 
Yeah. Oh my goodness. I think the far the furthest south I've played was Stone Pony several times. You played Stone Pony? Oh. Yeah, yeah, we've we've opened for uh, a few uh, well-known um, acts. Uh, we played the other one to the Saint uh, a couple of times. Okay. Um, played Jake's. We we we've been around. We've been in the city too, mostly was, in the city. Yeah. More so than anything. I was just at Stone Pony a couple of weeks ago. I went to see a band. They're called Yacht Rock Review. I don't know if you've heard of them. Mm, I have not known. They are the best night out you will ever see. So I we go. Oh, yeah. Like every year. I mean, until COVID, obviously, my family, you know, yeah, those yeah, yeah. cruises that are like floating festivals. Yes, like, yes, yes, yes. So my parents are big train fans, as in Hey Soul Sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey train Soul has a cruise every year called the Sail Across the Sun. We go. And there was this band called the Yacht Rock Review, and they are m- maybe the best cover band I've ever seen in my life. And they play. Oh, they're a cover band. Okay. Yeah, they're a cover band. They have a few originals, but they're a, just a, they're they're like ten pieces. They have a full horn oh, set. Wow. Like, yeah, it's a huge band. And they played the summer stage, and we all were just like, "Let's go!" Nice. It's our first night out in mm. like a year. Let's go! And it was great. But I always forget how great of a venue the Stone Pony is. Pony is quite nice. Mm-hmm. Um, have you have you ever played it? I have you ever graced never it? Never played Stone Pony. No, we never got that. Mm-hmm. Thing. Yeah. I only say I only said it because uh, if you do play Stone Pony, they're to the minute. So we played it. I want to say five times out of the, the span of our careers. But every time we do go, they want you there forty-five minutes before your set. Okay. Um, all your equipment on stage, ready, and then as soon they as they have you do a forty-five minute as, setup. It's like this. As soon as the other band is done. You're in, out, boom, three minutes sound check in, ready to go. Like, just on the clock. Damn. No banter. Like, whoever's there, too bad. You know, I, I, the first, the first time we experienced it, I'm like, yo, my people are not even here yet. Like, what is going on? Yeah. So we played literally half our set. Then obviously the, the, the folks came in, but we we're like, I'm sorry. I, we didn't realize it was going to be like this at the pony. But then again, it's own pony. It's like one of the, yeah. One of the most uh, famous venues here in Jersey, so there was a place it was it was interesting. In the city, we played like that. You know, Desmond's Tavern. It's by Penn yeah, State. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we played Desmond's mm. Tavern, and they were the same way. Where they were like, it's and so one of our like sound check songs that we always did was Careless Whisper because our guitar, uh-huh. our uh, piano player, he had a keytar, and he had to like he just played Careless nice. Whisper on the keytar. He's just like do you want to just start our set with careless whisper and we could just sound check during it? We were like, fucking hell yeah, yes. we're going to start this. And so like that, that's such a stressful thing though, especially if you have, like, yeah. yeah, really stressful. Mm. So if, if you're not used to it, it will, it will really, it will grind your gears kind of. There's yeah, other venues in the city too. Pianos does that. Um, been there a couple of times. Um, I forget it, all the other ones that we played in, but like, there's quite a few. Yeah. At, at our height, though, I want to say we almost opened up for um, not Jimmy Eat World, the other one. It was another band, same. Well, we were going to play at a PlayStation Theater, um, and we were going to open for them, but uh, I forget what the band. But like is. Newfound Glory but or something. It was some, yeah, it was some shit like that because yeah. my band is we're like. ACDC ish. Okay. Jimi Hendrix, like that's our sound. And then my voice is pretty raspy. So like we combine with Foo Fighters. So like that mm-hmm. kind of uh a gig. Um so we kinda we can go with the the punk rock scene, the the hard rock scene, the metal. So like somewhere in between kind of. But that didn't we couldn't fall through because I think the ticket sales are like a hundred fifty. I'm like, yeah, yeah, we can't. We can't yeah, do. right. Hundred fifty. Are you crazy? That's, that's plus it's in a city. Like everybody, my, at least all my all our fans are in Jersey bound, so right. it was unfortunate. But it would have been fun as hell though yeah. to get to play at that legendary theater. But yeah, enough about me though. I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about you. Crazy. Um. So in terms of food though, now you say you did. You, you know, you you say you know how to cook. What some of the meals that you like to? What is it? What are your go to meals? Go to meals for me. I make a mean quiche. I really do. Ooh. ooh, ooh. I like quiche. Yeah, I make a, a real kick-ass quiche. Um, that's my go-to. If I'm going to make breakfast for someone, I make a quiche. Love it. Nice, Delish. Nice, nice. Um, 
So as far as like dinners, I make a pretty good, um, like a stuffed chicken. And then I'm also one of those people that if I look in the fridge, I could probably throw something together. That's why I say like I live to Ah. eat or like I eat to live, not live to eat. Like Mm. I don't really necessarily think ahead, but I always do when I go to the grocery store, like to have good quality stuff in my fridge. So when I'm throwing Mm. things together, I'll have good stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, Um, I understand you. Yeah. So um, I make a very good... Like, I learned how to make a cacio e pepe, but I don't even okay. like it that much. Like, I just learned <laughs> from a chef, so I know I can do it. But I'm kind of like, I eat, like, three or four bites of this, and I'm sick of it already. It's so rich. Yeah. Um, it's just it's just cheese, eggs, and it's che- so rich. Uh, cheese and eggs. I don't know. I like pepper. It's something I had recently. I would love to learn a fantastic, like, good, like good Caesar salad recipe. I know it's super easy, Ooh. but either it's mm-hmm. there's there's way too much like mustard in it or like what and like I haven't found that mix between like acidy and creamy like that I really really would mm. like that. But I if I could have Caesar salad with grilled shrimp on it for the rest of my life, I'd be happy. You would I, do it? Oh, I would. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So I will send you a recipe for the easiest Caesar please, salad you can do. Please do. It's it's su- it's super easy. Mm-hmm. Um, question though, do you like anchovies? I do. Okay, and so that's that's like the the main yeah. um, hill that we need to tackle on because um, Caesar salad wouldn't be Caesar salad without the anchovies. Otherwise, it would be just ranch dressing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah so I was pescatarian for a while. So I lived in England for like six months. And then I came home nice. and I was like, I need to detox my body because everything was fried and full of alcohol. <laughs> I need yeah. to do de- So I was a vegan for a while. Mm-hmm. And I didn't mind giving up the meat. I didn't mind giving up a lot of things, but just eggs was really difficult. And then certain things of dairy was really tough. So mm-hmm. all I wanted was a Caesar salad, like a good Caesar <laughs> salad. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so okay, I eat I every gotcha. seafood except scallops. I'm not a fan of scallops. Ooh, interesting. Is it what what makes you what makes you say no to scallops? I don't know. It's just the aftertaste is always so weird and sweet to me. I will truly mm. I'm one of those people. If you say here, eat this bug or eat this brain, I'll be I'll be like, yeah, slurp. Like I'll try it. I don't cool. but scallops for me i've tried so many times like i'm not a picky eater but i just know scallops i like them raw but like a a seared scallop and i know everyone loves them but i cannot get behind them i do not like them so it's the sweet is the sweet salinity that you can't go yeah like sweet aftertaste i just don't like and i wish i did it is sweet yeah like every other seafood i'm good with everything else and like Mm. if someone was to say to me tomorrow you cannot have land meat only ocean meat i'd be like i'm fine with that i'm fine cool yeah but you're okay with shrimp Shrimp. that also has a slightly sweet aftertaste but it's still it's not the same to me with as as scallop Uh, yeah uh, and i know like like crab and stuff like it all like like because crab i find sweeter than like a lobster right Mm -hmm. correct it still doesn't. I don't know. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to <laughs> I'm try it to, again. I'm trying I guess, to figure but... out. I'm like, hmm. Okay, how do you how do you have it prepared though? When you say seared, that could be a lot of things. How how was the last scalp that you can think of prepared? How was the inside? How did it look like? So it would. So I went to a restaurant. And my mom got uh, scallops, and it was like pretty opaque until the middle, and then it was pretty translucent. But it was okay. like a hard sear on the outside, like crusty. Mm. So, you, mm, so you almost had it medium. Then I was wondering maybe if you had it close to what we serve, like rare, rare plus, uh, on the restaurant. Maybe, maybe that would be a little. Okay, better. so let's talk about it. One of those chefs that I was talking about that I went on a date with. Mm. Um, he had a spoon, 
Andy also had a chef's hat <laughs> back here because he got the spoon when he got a Michelin star. Apparently that is, Ooh. yeah, that is like it's the pretty, thing. It's a high regard. Mm. Yeah. But then his little chef's hat looked like a muffin. It was so stupid. But like, <laughs> <laughs> but he's just like, <laughs> oh my God. It's Calling it. out the spoon guy for it's everybody it. right now. <laughs> it's it. But like, so he says like hey i want to cook you dinner and i was just like oh stop it and then like so i go (laughs) (laughs) and he's like oh i made this non-dairy non-grain lentil risotto which was delicious and then he's like and then i made a scallop crudo and i was like oh okay okay loved it loved it raw i just i'm not into the cooked scallop i think that's what it is like once it cooks it like releases some flavor. I don't know. No, I, I, might, know. I might sound like an idiot, but it just, you're it's not. The one. No, no. So you are, you're more avert to the texture. So it, it? it happens to, yeah, it happens to shrimp too. So when you overcook the shrimp, it will mimic that same exact sense that you have with the scallop, but you have to have it just under to experience the full, hmm. the full effect for it. So I'll have to try on it. crude. On crude would be the um, the scallop preparation that you you like, but the our seared preparation is like rare. The the scallops, not not raw, but it's literally just maybe thirty seconds on each side. Again, would, I'm down to try be... anything. Like I will never <laughs> say I do not like something like definitively. Like I I'll be like yeah, I'll try it again. I guess, but like hundred percent. No, no, I, I feel you. It's very mm, interesting. Now I'm trying to think of other dishes that maybe you might have an avert to. How about how about um, oysters? Love them or like raw clams. Love them. Okay. <laughs> I, mm. I, like that. That's why. <laughs> like that's why scallops for me. I was always kind of like, why am I not into these? And it's just like it was an aftertaste while they were cooked. But the raw mm. fish, it's kind of like you know. So it's kind of yeah, like yeah, I yeah. tasted it maybe a little bit, and it was more like. I know he had put like yuzu on it and like a lot of different flavors. So I was like, oh, I just kind of tasted like the brininess and then all the flavors from that. So I didn't really taste the scallop. And also I was being so polite. So (laughs) 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 I was like, thank you for cooking me dinner. (laughs) Thank you, muffin guy. Yes, thank you, muffin man. (laughs) I do know where the muffin man lives. It's in Brooklyn. (laughs) That's hilarious. Yeah, a little muffin. Um, another fact for you, uh, most Michelin restaurants are in New York, literally like over like 500 of them are in New wow. York. Wow. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot. Like if you really want to eat out well, um, obviously Michelin restaurants would be, uh, the thing, but like, is it worth the price tag? I don't think so. I think, I mean, I'm, I'm always avert to that kind of style of cooking. I I've done it. The, don't get me wrong. Right. I, I know how to prepare that stuff. I know the what what needs to transpire in that kind of environment but am i gonna pay three four hundred dollars for a fucking duck no mm. i'll do that myself for like 30 or 40 dollars myself but then again again i'm biased because i can do it myself so it's, it's so a different experience altogether i have a question i've heard just mm. as an uninformed person and a person okay. that has watched jiro dreams of sushi um amazing <laughs> yeah so i've heard amazing. that like the ranking is if they have one star if you are in the city you have to go there if they have two stars yes. it's worth it traveling to that city for that restaurant if it's in your country mm-hmm. and number three it's worth traveling to that country for that restaurant is that Absolutely. accurate accurate very yeah. accurate very accurate um the, the the i think the better the better visual for you would be try to find the un Michelin restaurants that can produce the same quality but don't have the star mm-hmm. or they didn't want they didn't want the Michelin guy to go in maybe just like James Beard Awards yeah yeah you know that's like the, the other ones uh try that food because I can assure you they can qualify as a one or two star already without having the price tag because again I I'm allergic to Michelin whenever somebody says Michelin I'm just like uh you're you're one of those guys I think I see tweezers I think fucking five hundred dollars fucking with like a flame coming out of your ass with flavored with sage or some shit like that's that's what I automatically think <laughs> it's it's annoying and like I I joke with Brandon so Brandon 
TikTok chef, uh, chef authorized. He's he worked at Michelin restaurants. Oh, he's a Michelin. duetted me on my tattoo video. Yeah. He's so cool. I was watching a, a he an has one here before. Yeah, yes, he does. <laughs> he's great though. Yeah, he's an awesome guy. Awesome guy. Um, but he's also avert to that. So he he's the same as me. So we don't really. We, we see eye to eye. So if okay. it was like somebody with a Michelin background and then he's kind of that guy, I'm like, mm, I don't know, man. I don't know if I. Right. I, I think we'll just kind of combat each other most of the time. But definitely check them out. Um, well, okay. not check them out, but like check out the restaurants that have James Beard Awards. Yeah. Without I'll Michelin have to effect. ask. And, what do you think of like, what is it? Zagat or Zagat? The Maybe? Zagat. The yeah, Zagat. The Zagat Awards. Yeah. Is, is it valid? Like, is it worth it? It is valid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So Zagat will be, will give you like the, the star components, four star, five yeah. star, whatever. Um, my, my current restaurant is actually the only four star restaurant here in Jersey that you can go to. Look so, at you. I'm just, I'm just saying two in my horn here. <laughs> two, um, two. We're pretty, you should. You should be proud of yourself. <laughs> we're, we're pretty high class. However, there are two other restaurants here in Jersey that are like top hundred in the U.S. Okay. No Michelin star though. Um, but I think uh, one by you would be Elements. I think that's in Princeton, I think. Or like New Brunswick. Okay, okay. It, their, their tasting menu also a little pricey. They're like 160 or something. Mm-hmm. Great experience. Um, high class food that you'll get away from the city, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then a little more north here and more, not north, but like out west, uh, Jockey Hollow. Uh, would be like another one, and that's a um, I think like a country club ish hmm. restaurant. Um, again, same awards, Zagat Awards, James Beard Awards, same thing. We have the same thing, yeah, in our restaurant. Um, but yeah, it's 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 um, it's it's a really big peeing contest. That's all I gotta that's say. What I feel. Do you have um, so just as you know, the uncultured person I am, <clears throat> somewhere in Jersey that. You're not taking any type of stars, anything like that into account. Like, where's a place where you're just like, you want to go get some dinner? Where do you oh go? Oh, my God. I, okay. So my favorite thing is ramen. Out okay. Of, out of all the fucking spots. I, I actually want to make my own ramen joint fairly soon. In like, in the next couple of years, <gasps> I'm going to break off and make my own. Like, I'm literally, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. Like, it's I'm excited. It's and I hope I get invited Thank to you. the premiere party of that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm absolutely. ready. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So it might be a trek for you though, because I know you're in Central, but up here, up north in uh, Edgewater, there's a supermarket called Mitsua, and it's a it's an Asian joint. I think you might have heard I've, of it. It's I've pretty popular. I've definitely heard of that because they have yeah, so yeah, yeah. many cool. I've seen it on TikTok. Yes. Literally everywhere. Everyone's posting mm-hmm. like quite a bit, especially if you're in Jersey. Yeah. At the back. At the back. So it, when you first enter Mitsua, doesn't matter where you enter really. Um, after you pass the supermarkets, towards the back where you exit, um, there's some restaurants. And there's there's a, maybe like six or seven of them. The one restaurant, though, touted to be the best ramen in New Jersey is in that little joint. And you can't miss it. It has Japanese flags in the front. Okay. Number 32, spicy tonkotsu ramen. Oh, my God. It just, really? It's so good. So good. I, I want that ramen. I, I dream of that fucking ramen. Like, I really... The, okay, so... That's the one made with the bones, is tongue cuts, right? It's like the, the cloudy mm-hmm. kind of broth, right? The cloudy one, correct. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. I, d- I got to know before I go. <laughs> 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 I just want to know what I'm expecting because I always do no, no, just I got like, the, the, like the shoyu or whatever. And I know I'm going to get the little slices of pork and I'm going to get a runny egg. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be like, yes, this yes, is, this is making my morning. <laughs> Fantastic. So this one. Ooh, this I'm will ready. give you more of a mouthfeel. Like it, it's mm. straight up, it it feels so rich and delicious. And also it has red meat in it. Gives you like that extra umami bomb. Okay. Uh, I like the spicy kinds because I'm a, I'm a glutton for spice. I really am. Um, I even do, I don't know if you've done it, but I've done the, you know, Sean Evans on YouTube, the hot ones. The yes. Wings. So I bought one of their seasons, the entire got, pack. My wife. Did you get yeah, like yeah, the yeah, dab or whatever? The last dab? All of it, all that one <gasps> season. So I have like ten hot sauces in my fridge. Okay. It's quite intense. And my wife and I did it, and we got to the last dab, and it was delicious. It wasn't really hot. Was well, it? I mean, it was hot. It was hot, but it was. Yeah. There was a, there was other ones before it, like the bomb. 
I was wondering how De Bomb is because everyone's like, this is terrible. This is a horrible song. It is terrible. Really? Because they use, it's straight, it feels charcoal. Like it tastes charcoal to you. So it's all liquid smoke. I don't know if you've ever had like, um, like faux, faux brisket or some shit. Like they didn't really smoke it in the oven. Yeah. And they add the liquid smoke. It's that the, the, the main thing for that sauce is they use liquid smoke. Oh. So once you, See, that once makes you ingest a lot of it, sense. oh my god, it's it's disgusting. It's it tastes like charcoal. It tastes like dirt. Your no your nose flares the fuck out. At least yeah, for me, because um, when I and then, was pescatarian, I used to cook with liquid smoke a lot more just to try gotta, it. Gotta, gotta, but gotta. but you put like a dash. You don't. Yeah, you. It's no, they, so it's like overwhelming. Fifty percent that on the bomb. Ugh, so it, that for me, bad. the hottest sauce was the bomb because it just. It annihilated my senses. I was just like, I I need to take a break. Even on our video, I'll be posting soon. On our video, it was like an hour video. I had mm. to take a break for a good twenty minutes just to get my sense of smell back because it was so bad. Oh, it was, that's it was so bad. Yeah, for me though, so for uh, my sense of smell is better than my sense of taste. So anything floral like that, it fucks with me. It really does, yeah. especially with my cooking. I can't do it. But um, so yeah. Definitely try out some spots with James Beater Awards. No okay. Michelin stars. Like I don't think I don't One think. One thing need I to. will ask of you is have mm. you been to Pete and Elda's? I have to be I have been to Pete and Elda's. I, I like it. Did you get the Definitely t-shirt? Gets, no. <laughs> no. I mean, should we maybe. maybe go and get a t shirt? I mean, yes. I think yeah. we should. Definitely. I think so. Definitely. <laughs> definitely <laughs> I also have never gotten show. a t shirt, but it's it's like they make their pizza on matzo. It's like crackers. Yeah. So I'm kind of yeah. like, I feel like at one point I should get a t-shirt. And I would also like to know what he feels about this pizza. I I dig the pizza. Actually, we're talking about if we're talking about pizza joints, I, again, a far trek for you. Uh, in Ridgewood, there's a place called Ezeguidio. It's, okay. um, it, it's an Italian restaurant. But anyway... Um, just maybe like 15 pizzas on her, but their, their claim to fame, they have awards for this now. They, it's pretty popular. They shipped a wood fire cement, um, oven from Italy all the way to New Jersey. It took them like three months or some shit. Wow. It's the only, it's the only one in that area. Literally, okay. as soon as you walk in, like big ass hearth, just with that oven alone and the, the way they do their pizzas, fantastic like All right. one of the best pizzas i've ever had Good to here know. in jersey in jersey not in new york you can't i mean in my opinion new york slices you just can't top it's just yeah, something can. in that water on that side um no For matter sure. where too like it, it will always be delicious like it will just be it'll be amazing yeah. here in jersey though it comes pretty close to that wood fire stuff so if you want to make a trek up um definitely a good there are places uh, good deal. close to the hudson don't worry yeah, 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 definitely. You know, as as an as a video, it will give you a good time on that. Alrighty. All right, Kelly. Now I do have some rapid fire questions before we do end, if you don't mind. So okay. just at, as you feel it, just come at me. Doesn't have to, doesn't have to go crazy. Um, what do you absolutely refuse to eat? Um, apples. I'm allergic. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh question follow-up question allergic raw allergic cooked i have oral allergy syndrome my friend so allergic never raw never mind yeah allergic i'm raw. sorry i can't gotta, eat gotta, it got it. raw got it got it mm-hmm. uh ever eaten anything weird like uh in terms of produce or proteins oh yeah for sure i've tried everything under the sun i've eaten chocolate covered ants i've eaten brains i've eaten haggis i love black pudding if if it exists i will try it oh my god are we best friends like what is yes, going on right we now? are like, yeah. this is this is ridiculous um like anytime i watch I, fear factor i'm kind of like yeah i'll eat that I that's you oh <laughs> yeah, my goodness <laughs> Are we like the same person? This is yeah. crazy. Um, I was going to say allergic to any kind of food, but you said apples. Mm-hmm. Um, I am allergic to chocolate, just to let you know. Rough. That's a rough one. Can, Although, no, I will really. say, I don't have a huge sweet tooth, so. Yeah, like, I don't I don't really yeah. go crazy for it. I, I get hives, so I'm the My lips consumption. Swell. Like, mm, see? I, I, don't, I don't fuck with it. Yeah. Um, favorite food 
And how would you prepare it or like it? My favorite food is pasta. And I love just like an, I love like an angel hair with a little bit of white wine, garlic, some fresh herbs, any, like if, if you can put more basil in, I want it and maybe some, (laughs) and maybe some seafood, but like I'm the type of person I will eat basil raw, like a basil salad, but like just a lot of herbs, white wine, garlic, butter, olive oil. And then throw some oh. grilled seafood on there. Like that's my favorite food and I will eat it every day. Has any of your chef friends ever made you aglio y olio? The pasta dish? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, they have. Yes, it's my have. favorite. Yeah. I was about to say, because that's exactly the what you just mentioned. Um, mm-hmm. Just the, the pasta with it. Okay. Cool. And then final, uh, final question for you. Um, ever eaten spam? I have. I have eaten it. Yes. It's good. I mean, again, so it's not the same thing. I come from pork roll country, so I was not afraid of spam. <laughs> so I need you to say that one more time. What? The, the Taylor ham? Yes, absolutely. So the Taylor ham, amazing uh, invention by Mr. Taylor. I it's mean, actually called pork roll, I mean, I like, just look up what the actual product is and look up what a brand is. And as someone that works in food production and branding, it's pork roll. I know. So. I, know. I don't, I don't want to say <laughs> it, but it's, you know, you, I'm right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, no, I know. I know you're right. I but know. like, if you, if you, if you fucking go to like a deli joint here and be like, Hey, can I get a pork roll egg and cheese? They're like, Hey, like, what the fuck are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, And then you drive Taylor like ham, 30 exits down. It's different. But because I've had pork roll, I was not afraid to eat spam. And I've had spam, what is it, musubi? Musubi? Musubi, yeah. Yeah, musubi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good as shit. It's so I know. good. I know. I do it on my menu. Um, just, you know, my, Real good. my to-go menu. Just, yeah, I'm not uh, afraid of spam. Give it a little. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Kelly, I, I truly appreciate you. Um, yeah. Definitely, now we're best friends because uh, pork roll. Mm-hmm. Um. If you haven't already, Kelly, if you don't mind, it, you don't have to, but I would like for you to just uh, tell everybody where they can find you and all that joint. Yeah, absolutely. So you could find me on TikTok at Kelly XX Fits. Um, and that's that's pretty much it right now. I mean, if you <laughs> follow me on Twitter, I, I, I kind of have a lot of private things. I just started another Instagram, Kelly XX Fits. Um, so I'm picking back up on there, but if you'd like to follow me there, but then also I'm also very active on, uh, the Shmi podcast and the Shmi show, go on my TikTok. Mm-hmm. You can find all the links on there, but, uh, that's about awesome. it right now. Awesome. Awesome. Again, uh, I'll make sure all the links are uh, down below so you can find Kelly and all our links, but absolutely she will feel like the home girl that you you've never had. So definitely check out her channel, check, check out her content really wholesome just really again really snarky it plays to my strength so i'm just like oh my god we need to thank you i appreciate that out. the home girl you've never had i love that yeah <laughs> you know if you don't have a home girl like it's it's a thing like it's you have to I'm have here. a home girl <laughs> yeah man so kelly's a girl other than that though ladies and gentlemen thank you so much and have a good one